What is up everyone? I am back and more consistent than ever. Gonna be uploading hopefully at least once a month. We're gonna get some videos out and I'm excited for today's topic. Uh, I asked a few of you in person uh, what kind of topics you'd like me to talk about next and unanimously I had several people ask for me to talk about dinosaurs. What does the Bible have to say about them? How do they come to be? And being quite honest, that's a little bit of a challenging topic. And it's not challenging because it's hard to come to a conclusion or it's hard to find references to dinosaurs in the Bible. It's tough because biblical scholars actually have two very different interpretations of what they see in the Bible. This difference of interpretations is really about the very beginning of the Bible. Genesis 1, we have the six days of creation and people interpret it differently. These two different interpretations kind of split off into two major groups, those who believe that the earth is old and those who believe that the earth is young. Old earthers believe that the earth is billions of years old and young earthers believe that it's anywhere between usually six and 10,000 years old. Old earthers believe that the six days weren't literal 24 hour periods but a day as in a period of time. It could have been different for every single one and that over billions of years was kind of boiled down to six days. Most old earthers believe in the theory of evolution, but where evolution has a bunch of plot holes, a bunch of missing links, stuff like that, they believe that those are the times that God came in, helped out, pushed evolution along, and got us to where we are today. This theory is called theistic evolution. So if you ask someone who believes in an old earth that believes in theistic evolution, their answer to how dinosaurs kind of came and went will be the same as an evolutionist pretty much is that millions of years ago they rose up and died off and they've been dead for a very long time. Now young earthers believe that those days in Genesis are actual literal days, 24 hour periods of time. So on the sixth day in a literal 24 hours, God created every land animal that exists and humans. So this literal interpretation of Genesis says that dinosaurs were just brought onto the earth around six to 10,000 years ago. But then the question becomes, and then what? When did the dinosaurs go extinct? And very commonly, I hear the answer that these dinosaurs were all just killed off by the flood. Now I have a problem with that because dinosaurs are animals and it says that there was two of every animal on the ark with Noah. So I believe that dinosaurs were all on the ark with Noah. So while the flood did contribute a lot to killing off every single animal and person that wasn't on the ark, uh, other than sea creatures, uh, it does not explain the thorough extinction of dinosaurs. So what we would have is dinosaurs climbing off the ark and then going extinct afterwards. So now the question has to be asked, is there any evidence for that? Is there anywhere in the Bible that shows that there was dinosaurs on the earth, any reference? And this is a little tougher to answer because of course they wouldn't call it a T-Rex. They wouldn't call it, you know, whatever we call it. We came up with these names looking at skeletons, not looking at the actual creature. So the names that they're gonna call these creatures back then are going to be different. But we can look at the description of certain creatures and we can say, hmm, that sounds like a dinosaur. And we do have that. In the book of Job, we have two creatures described to us that sound like no animal currently living on earth. And they do sound like ginormous reptilian creatures. But before we get into the creatures themselves, I wanna give a little backstory on Job. Job was a very rich man who lived on the earth shortly after the flood. He had lots and lots of wealth, lots of animals, lots of everything, and he was a servant of God. But God was asked the question, what if Job only serves you because of the good things that he has? You've blessed Job, and because of the blessings, he worships you. Now, would he still worship you if he wasn't rich? And so God decides to test that theory and he allows Job to be absolutely tormented. Everything's taken away from him, his wife, his children, his riches, all destroyed. And Job is wondering, what did I do wrong? I've served God with my entire life. Why are these bad things all of a sudden just happening to me? Job's friends are indignant. You must have done something wrong to deserve this. And Job says, I didn't do anything wrong. There's no way I deserve all these terrible things that are happening to me. And then God comes and talks to Job himself. When God talks to Job, he drives home this point of, who are you to think that you deserved any of this stuff in the first place? You don't deserve good things to happen to you just because you serve me. You should serve me because I'm the creator. I put all this stuff here. I deserve to be served whether you have good stuff or not. 
Me taking something from you doesn't mean that you did something wrong. It just means it was mine to begin with. I let you have it and I take it away. You can't have any problem with that, can you? Then God begins to show the vast gap between who is God and who are you? Who is a man? God starts talking about different animals like donkeys, ostriches, horses, describing them in great detail and saying, do you know all these things about them? Where were you? Who gave them all of the beautiful things, all the strengths that they have? Where did that come from? God says, have you given the horse its strength or clothed its neck with a flowing mane? Is it your wisdom that makes the hawk soar and spread its wings towards the south? Is it at your command that the eagle rises to the heights to make its nest? And God continues to ask things like, are you as strong as God? Basically just asking Job, are we on equal footing that we should debate what is fair in this relationship? Or did I create everything and give you everything that you have and you're actually entitled to nothing? And everything I give to every creature on earth is an absolute blessing and should be taken that way. And Job starts to back down. He goes, you're right, I'm absolutely nothing. I don't deserve anything. I was in the wrong, but God's not finished. God lists and then starts describing two creatures that can only be understood to be massive dinosaurs. God says, take a look at the behemoth, which I made just as I made you. It eats grass like an ox. Its tail is as long as a cedar. Its bones are tubes of bronze. Its limbs are bars of iron. It is not disturbed by the raging river, not concerned when the swelling Jordan rushes around it. No one can catch it off guard or put a ring in its nose and lead it away. So God's describing in pretty good detail this massive creature that is a herbivore, but nobody can tame it. It's way too big, way too strong. God's using the absolute strongest metals they have available at the time, bronze and iron, to describe its bones and its limbs. It can sit in a river and the flow doesn't mean anything to it because it's too big and too strong. Even with the slight artistic language that God's using, this description of this creature doesn't match anything other than a dinosaur. But God doesn't stop there. He goes on to one more creature and he calls this creature the Leviathan. I want to emphasize the Leviathan's limbs and its enormous strength and graceful form. Who can strip off its hide? And who can penetrate its double layer of armor? The scales on its back are like rows of shields tightly sealed together. They are so close together that no air can get between them. Lightning leaps from its mouth. Flames of fire flash out. Smoke steams from its nostrils like the steam from a pot heated over burning rushes. Its breath would kindle coals, for hot flames shoot from its mouth. No sword can stop it, no spear, dart, or javelin. Iron is nothing but straw to that creature, and bronze is like rotten wood. Now this thing sounds like a dragon, shooting fire out of its mouth? And this is where a lot of people look at this passage and they go, well, God is maybe making up a creature. But that doesn't really follow at all with the logic of God's statements. We have a list of maybe 20 other creatures that God has described in perfect detail, creatures that we are familiar with and know. And he's using those creatures to prove a point to Job, that I created this, and therefore I owe you nothing. If you believe in the Bible, even as so much as a historical text, something that was written by the people of the time with religious meaning, it's tough to believe or say that these authors would say these things about God and not believe that these creatures exist. This text intricately lays out how people interacted with these creatures, how dangerous it was, and how massive they were. So then the next question is, if they didn't die out millions of years ago, they got on the ark and they got off the ark and they existed after the flood, where are they now? How did they go extinct in such a short time? There are several theories that exist as far as why dinosaurs all died out so quickly after the flood. And a lot of it has to do with changes in the atmosphere. Many scholars believe that before the flood, it had never rained before. And that's a huge atmospheric change if you just have all this water that was in the sky and now it's not there anymore. Some believe that before the flood, there was a lot more oxygen in the air and that the decrease of oxygen made it really difficult for bigger creatures to exist. And it's well documented that when the apex predator in an ecosystem dies off, it affects the entire ecosystem catastrophically, meaning that 
that wouldn't just explain why the big apex predators died off, but all the way down would make sense. In conclusion, I just wanna say that either of these interpretations are absolutely fair. There's nothing crazy about either conclusion. Throughout the narrative of the Bible, there's many different times where we don't get every detail of the story, and we have to kind of fill in the blanks with guesses. And that's all these are. It's people interpreting it differently and guessing at what actually happened. If those kind of things interest you, I encourage you to subscribe, like, comment, tell me what you want to see next. If there's something about the Bible that you have a burning question about, please ask in the comments. I'd love to cover things people actually want to hear about. Thank you so much.